War Thunder, such a fantastic game that players actually have to make events themselves in order to get worth out of what Galgen could potentially make here. Let's discuss this in further uh, development here. Welcome to Battle Group, an innovative new combined arms, naval and air game mode heavily inspired by the cult classic game series Battle Stations. The map. We return to the Pacific with Peleliu taking center stage in our new conflict. With a never before seen environment and fast paced gameplay in mind, you can be sure it's not going to disappoint. The game mode requires you to capture all the points on the map to win the game. Sound simple? Not quite. Each capture zone comes with a factory point. Light, medium and heavy shipyards dominate the landscape, each offering their own unique spawn options. Light shipyards allowing the deployment of PT boats and destroyers, all the way up to the heavy factories allowing the assistance of high-powered reinforcements. But be sure to keep an eye out. Capture points are defended. Coastal installations as well as anti-aircraft guns plague the combat zone. Denge's Passage and Amubrico Mountain both host light shipyards allowing PT boats and destroyers to deploy from them, handy as a backup base. North Island, Omakang Island, Ngerikevit Island and Negasibus Island all bear medium factories allowing the deployment of anything up to a heavy cruiser for certain shipyards. Cup Island, the most important on the map, boasts a heavy shipyard. It is the only shipyard on the map with no limitations, plus the ability to deploy none other than battleships. But the Navy doesn't have all the fun. Aircraft play an integral role in the mission, with a high-value heavy airfield factory in the center of the map. Aircraft are needed to disrupt the enemy from capturing, as well as taking the fight to the skies in attacking and defending our brand new kill streaks earned by capturing factories. Needing something a little more mobile? Each team gets a dedicated aircraft carrier for tactical deployment across the map. Aircraft players also have the ability to fly seaplanes, which can aid in capturing points ahead of your team in ships. However, this does mean that you will be extremely vulnerable to enemy fire, so it's high risk, high reward. The winner is the first team to capture all of the shipyards or whoever holds the most at the end of the round. You've seen the playing field. You know the mission, fight in nimble fast attack craft or brawl in heavy hitters. There are no rules. Offering the ultimate War Thunder sandbox experience, play it your way. Now doesn't that look bloody enticing? If only War Thunder could get their finger out of their asshole and actually manage to make something that is usable like that. Now granted, they have had some good events in the past, but this begs the question, why is it always about how players are having to make game modes themselves in order to break the grind that is current? Now the mission maker here, Weeby, is also known for making the 64 player uh, missions where your teams go up against each other. You may have seen the Midway movie on Fly Daily's channel and there are several other examples of that kind of thing happening. I did a video about three months ago uh, talking about the Battle of Britain and it's my current channel trailer. That's one of the events that we took part in. There's no markers, no etc etc. This is a slightly different take on that one. Obviously, as explained in the intro, uh, the Battle Group trailer obviously explores the idea of what if we push War Thunder to its limits, allow players to actually use and probably actually feel like they're a part of a team, and actually engage with, I guess, fun and engaging gameplay rather than the same team deathmatch that current all matches are. Because let's be real, War Thunder hasn't necessarily developed any good game modes. We've been asking for new game modes for years. And I think this is finally an opportunity to test something that is well done uh, and player made and something that is made for the community. Now, about now as the publisher of, of this video, Fly Daily will have his first gameplay video op of this particular mission. But suffice to say that it is incredibly interesting and, a, and a, a, I guess a novel idea. And hopefully uh, that when they get the internal testing done and we'll get the first public content creator games going, there'll be some interesting footage and we'll have some feedback and some things to present to Gaussian about how important it is to have diversity within your game. It's almost as if we bicker over battle compression, fiddly mechanics, and yet we're still here yet and have yet to have a game mode which even compares to something like seen in the trailer. Obviously the 64 man player and no markers and, and, and historical focus team based gameplay is a separate subject altogether but 
obviously there are issues and balancing such a large scale of battles but having a game mode with the ability of recreating some of the most inspiring moments in video game history or could it go down as a sort of beacon towards war thunder to actually wake the stale up and say listen mate we've had enough of your team deathmatch we've had enough of your constant premiums and bullshit why not make something more engaging that the community might enjoy as a whole and it's almost as if the community also has said galjan no more crafting events. They're tedious, time consuming, and you can't get all the vehicles. Galjan, coming up, crafting two electric boogaloo. It's almost as if they want to make us suffer with events that you can participate in. And sure, if you're participating in an event to unlock a particular vehicle or so on and so forth, that's, that's fine. But the ability to not unlock all those vehicles or to not really have any sense of direction with these events makes the player base increasingly toxic and basically makes everything that exists within the game exponentially worse for weeks on end it's just a shame that war thunder as a whole really just lacks any sort of game development they tried world war mode and look how much of a flop that was first and second season was utterly garbage third season was a lot better than the first two but it still didn't feel like they had learnt their lesson from all the community feedback that was given i made several videos about those you can find them up in the cards above and if it wasn't bad enough, they made simulator battles into the events tab, removing it from the actual battle queue when you go down to the drop down box. Because arcade is so prevalent and realistic is so prevalent as in terms of player numbers, I have no idea why they decided to make simulator a separate thing. It wasn't really needed. It didn't really need to happen at all. I feel that it was really an unnecessary change that didn't help with the game mode discussion. Because obviously there is an underlying problem here. There are so many different parts of the game. You have helicopters, you have aircraft, you you have ships and you have tanks right those are four different game modes split them up between different sectors arcade realistic simulator enduring confrontation or maybe some uh, like other event you have a lot of different people liking different things and that doesn't necessarily contribute to anything particularly well let's not mention the fact that enduring confrontation as a whole i don't know why galjan haven't brought that one back either something that would have been fantastic to see developed over a period of time to where it was fun and engaging and it felt like it was rewarding to play a couple of matches a week hell a better solution to break things up would to be have your regular matches like you do your team death match during the week and then on the weekend have it so that there is events going on that people can play and people can get into the game and unlock vehicles and unlock the modules that people are you know suffering with i suppose the important takeaway here is how players are having to make their own game modes in order to break themselves from a grind. This shouldn't be a thing. Game modes should be something of a fun nature. For example, whatever happened to the floats event? Everyone loved the floats event, where you basically had to land a seaplane and capture a point. There are heaps of instances of people loving something, and Gaijin instantly turns around and ruins that particular thing for no apparent reason, or because the event wasn't popular enough, or because there was some sort of issue. It's bad enough that once a year we get a different game mode showing up called April Fools that really shows us what the game is doing. Although, admittedly, they use that as a test period for their new, I guess, upcoming content. It's really something of subject to, I guess, Im immense discussion here. April Fools is really, sadly, the only new thing that comes to War Thunder in terms of a game mode, in terms of a fun, entertaining and engaging time with the community. And even so, that's in a limited capacity. It's not that people want to break from grinding, far from, from that. They just want to have fun while playing instead of doing the same tedious thing over and over and over again. It's almost as if beating a dead horse and then trying to polish a turd wasn't good enough in general, but War Thunder tends to be a game that gets that stick anyway. It just proves that the battle group War Thunder game mode as a whole should be particularly interesting. If not, the same with the 64 player realistic uh, missions, I suppose. It has such potential to take over the Simcade market that I think that War Thunder really should capitalize on it, although they already are, because let's really be honest with ourselves here. War Thunder is an arcade simulation at best. It's that level entry between arcade and realistic that sort of sits in that sweet spot between, I guess, having so many fantastic vehicles and, and different ideas, but War Thunder ultimately is executed poorly, and I just hope that when these events go live and when I get some gameplay and some time in with the community, that ultimately it is something of worth and we can provide some feedback towards War Thunder as a whole. Anyway, I look forward to covering this particular game mode and we'll probably will have some fun. It looks very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I want to hear your opinion specifically on what War Thunder should and shouldn't add in regards to events because 
ultimately this is what diversifies and what makes the game feel a little bit different so it's quite interesting anyway i hope you've enjoyed today's video thank you much for weeby for providing me with the trailer and some other assets i hope you've enjoyed today's video my name is ash and um i don't know like comment subscribe and all that good stuff see you later Bye bye